Hailed as groundbreaking regulation of tech companies, the UK government's online safety bill aims to help keep users of social media platforms safe, especially children, and protect them from harmful content. Here's the message from the government. Today, UK ministers axed a plan which would have forced online platforms to take down legal but harmful material. The move was welcomed by free speech advocates but criticised by opposition politicians. But we've rebalanced this in terms of freedom of choice for adults as well by removing the legal but harmful clauses that many, including myself, were deeply concerned about because of the ramifications for free speech. Because what that would have been is the government creating this category that's neither legal nor illegal. And you can do it if you're off a computer, but you can't do it if you're on social media. And it's all a bit confusing. Well, we're worried that they appear to be weakening the online safety bill and taken out measures which we thought were important. There are deep concerns that the weakening of this bill means that uh, um, um, content which is encouraging of self-harm or racist and anti-Semitic abusive content could still go unchecked. Well, we discussed the online safety bill as a whole with a panel of interested parties. Christina Criddle, who writes on technology and social media for the Financial Times, the online safety campaigner Ruth Moss and broadcaster and mother of three Anne Hughes. Christina, so there are a number of amendments to this bill, but the most controversial change is the dropping of the requirement of platforms to take down legal but harmful content. Why is the government backed away from that? So previously, the online safety bill would have required social media platforms to take down content that was harmful but was legal. Now, that caused a huge backlash from the tech industry and also from privacy campaigners who said that these measures could be used to limit freedom of speech. So the legal but harmful requirement has been removed, but legal but harmful content is still not allowed in terms of children on the online safety bill. So things like bullying will not be allowed when it comes to children and social media platforms will still have to take that down. And Christina, what does the bill as a whole seek to achieve and, and how will it do that? This is really meant to be a landmark piece of legislation that helps to regulate some of the most powerful internet companies in the world. There isn't legislation for that in the UK at the moment and it's been four years in the making and would be really welcome. I think over those past four years, you've seen a real demand for these platforms to be held to account. You've seen some really high profile cases of child safety, mm -hmm. instance where children have been exposed to really harmful content on those platforms and then taken their own lives. And, and Ruth, you have a very personal reason for campaigning um, on issues of online harm because your 13-year-old uh, daughter Sophie took her own life after looking at you know, harmful content online, didn't she? She did, yes. We'd had um, some difficulty controlling that even though we have parental controls then. And Sophie was quite a vulnerable child anyway. Um, and in 2014, she um, took her own life. And after that, we found really quite horrible material that she'd been looking at on her iPad, oh, which she needed for school at the time. So she, she had to access uh, online, yeah, obviously. Um, Ruth, do you think this bill is fit for purpose then? Do you think it will protect children from online harm? I have some real concerns about the fact that the legal but harmful clause has been taken out. And the reason for those concerns is the vast majority of things that Sophie viewed online were legal but harmful. Yes, there were a few of those that would have been considered illegal. And I think the problem I have is that there is very little mention in the bill, apart from this age verification, as to how actually the government in this bill is planning to prevent children like Sophie seeing legal but harmful content. They say they will do that using more strict um, age verification, but there are some issues with that as well. So I do have some problems with that, and I do think that the bill has been watered down by that. Yeah, and, and sorry, I will bring you in a second, but Christina, could you just clarify, is there anything in the bill to protect children other than this age verification 
clause? So yes, harmful content is still going to be taken down. The social media platforms can be fined if they don't in terms of children being exposed to it. But it is right that age verification processes are not up to scratch. You've seen most children have a social media platform these days and still children are being exposed to harmful content on the platforms every day. The online safety bill has actually criminalized things like encouraging self-harm and suicide content, but those were already against many social media platforms policies, and yet that content still exists. Um, and what do you think about this bill and in, in terms of how it protects children? You have children at a range of ages. One, The oldest one is 19. Yeah, and the youngest is eight, and I've got a 15-year-old in the middle, I think, and I'm so sorry to, to hear it about Sophie, Ruth. I, I think that's a real wake-up call, I think, to all parents, really, because we have to take some accountability for the fact that we have to start to parent our children maybe differently and that's not to blame parents it's what it is to say is like when I was young the biggest dangers in my life lay outside my door now the biggest dangers in our children's lives are sit is sitting in their pocket it's on their desks it's there continually and I think like 100% I think the organisations have to do something about this it is right that the government is trying to legis legislate for this but there is a difficulty in we have to also do something. So I think, like, for my children especially, my 19-year-old does use social media, but maybe not as much. I don't think she takes it too seriously. My 15-year-old isn't interested in it, so I know I'm quite lucky with that. And my 8-year-old is still too young to be involved in it. They are all of an age where they get technology much quicker than me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I think there's that thing about getting your children, as a parent, getting my children to explain technology to me, and within that conversation mm -hmm. being able to say, so what did you find on the internet today? Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it's very challenging. I don't know that there is an easy quick fix for this, quite honestly. Uh, there's not, Christina, is there? Because in some, in some respect, you can't police the whole of the internet. It would just be too difficult. Yes, these companies have been trying to moderate all sorts of content since they've been around. It's a completely new problem in society and nobody has cracked it yet. It's really difficult to moderate harmful content and also make sure that you're not censoring people's experiences. Often people want to talk about their experiences of quite sensitive topics and the difficulty when you bring in certain technologies to remove content automatically is that their experiences get silenced too. I think there's also something about the algorithms. You know, just now I know exactly what is getting shown in my social media. It's everything that I am looking at. You know, a lady of a certain age, everything I look at is getting advertised mm. to me continually. I think that there is an option, surely, to stop the algorithms. Because if I was a young person looking at harmful content, I would assume that that would continually be getting shown to them. So there is mm -hmm. some, surely, some responsibility that people could take. Ruth, what, what do you think the answer is and what would have made a difference to your family? So um, I'm going to answer a couple of points that have been made there, actually, as well as, as your question. Firstly, as a parent, um, I did have those conversations with my children and my intellect, internet was heavily locked down with parental controls, as was the schools. But the internet is ubiquitous. And quite often, my daughter looked at the internet when she was traveling on the bus home with her brother, which has free Wi-Fi, or she would be waiting on um, me picking her up after school in a cafe. And so it wasn't always as easy um, as just parents, although they're doing their bit. Um, it's These controls are still really necessary. What would have made it easier for my daughter is for the content not to be A, foisted upon her when she saw it. So those algorithms are really important and it's a safety by design that I would be asking for from companies. But secondly, um, for it not to be there in the first place, I think we downplay a lot of the severity of the sort of content that my daughter looked at. Um, because it's not illegal, there is a sort of downplaying that for some reason we are legislating against hurt. I think that was talked about once. The sort of images that Sophie looked at may well be legal in this new piece of legislation, but they were still very, very damaging to her mental health mm -hmm. and they shouldn't be there. Christina, that's a really interesting point. Do you think some of it is, is downplayed and also there will be um, ways to protect children under 18? But, you know, an 18, someone who's 19 is, is still really in many respects a child. Where's the protection for them? 
I think the algorithms point is really important. The way that these platforms are designed is to draw you in. And so if you give a tiny little glimmer that you're interested in something, that content will be served to you again and again, and often it will get more and more extreme. Now, in my case, that's lots of cat videos. But if you're feeling a little bit low, that can turn into some potentially very dangerous content. And that can be for vulnerable adults too. Mm -hmm. So it is on these social media platforms to reveal how their algorithms work. In the new legislation, they will have to provide risk assessments of their algorithms. And Ofcom, the media regulator, will be looking at them very closely. And, and, you know, with the best will in the world, we, we don't know what our kids are up to on, on, you know, you can check their search histories, but, you know, we have to trust them to a certain extent. And, you know, we are depending on these companies getting rid of a lot of it. I find that really, really worrying. I do. I do as a parent. I really do. But I think it's a bigger societal thing, isn't it? We need to take responsibility for the stuff people say. And, you know, when does it become hate speech? If I'm just saying it to one person, is that hate speech? I don't know. But at some point, we all have to stand and against stuff like mm -hmm. this because then we make it unacceptable in society. In society just now, mm -hmm. too many people are voicing very hateful opinions and getting away with it. And we all have to take a stand in that. Even if it is standing in the queue for a bus and somebody is being hateful, you have to take a stand on it because we all, it's our whole responsibility as a people. Yeah, I mean, Ruth, would you agree with that? And also, do you feel that people um, in authority are listening to what you're saying after, you know, after what you've been through? Um, I agree that it, a kind of society is definitely needed. But that's not going to happen overnight. And whilst we are working towards that cultural shift, that's where this legislation is really important. I don't think that, as from today, I am concerned that people making these laws are not listening to parents like me. And can I just say that for every child like Sophie who dies by suicide from looking at this kind of material, there will be hundreds of thousands of children that suffer mental health problems as a result of looking at this, this material. And so it's not just looking at the severe cases like myself, like Ian Russell and many other parents, it is looking at the wider picture as well. And I know I don't think they have been listening to what we've been saying because I do think that this is a watering down of the bill. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. But uh, Anne, Ruth and Christina, thank you all very much indeed for joining us this evening.